Great world building requires a good timeline of events, and Pokemon is no exception. In Pokemon Gold and Silver, we learned that they took place three years after the games that came before them, meaning that each of the mainline Pokemon games have a continuity and aren't just single entities. Obviously, it's only expanded exponentially since then, and that's what we'll be exploring today. I'm Kyle with Pokebinge, and this is the complete Pokemon timeline. So how exactly do we know when all these events take place? Well, in-game text is the key. Whenever an important historical event is brought up, it's often explained that it took place X number of years ago. So that always gives us a good idea of where it fits into the timeline. And a lot of speculation is also involved. With that in mind, how do we know the order in which the games take place? Game scenario writer Tashinabu Matsumiya shared the chronology of the games up to X and Y in a now-deleted tweet from 2014. One very important thing to note before we begin is that Pokemon actually consists of multiverses with two major timelines. One where Mega Evolution doesn't exist, and another where it does. This is backed up by Zinnia mentioning in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire that there is a second Hoenn region where there is no Mega Evolution, and the Ultra Wormholes in the Generation 7 games. With several events being exclusive to the Mega Timeline, we'll specify which ones those are when we get to them. Finally, we'll be using the year 1996 as a reference point, since it was the year that the original Pokemon Red and Green came out in Japan. The beginning of the universe. A single egg comes into being inside a world of complete nothingness. The first Pokemon, Arceus, hatches out and creates Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina, who in turn create time, space, and antimatter. While Dialga and Palkia form the universe and return to their own dimensions, Arceus sends Giratina to the Distortion World as punishment for its misdeeds. Arceus then creates Yuxi, Mespirit, and Azelf, which give knowledge, emotion, and willpower, respectively, to all living things that come into being. The three go to reside in caves, at the bottom of Lakes Verity, Valor, and Acuity. Next, Kyogre is formed in the Deep Sea Trenches, Groudon deep inside the Earth, and Rayquaza in the Ozone Lair. Kyogre and Groudon proceed to fill the sea and form land, respectively, and a chance meeting turns the two into rivals, leading to a violent clash for supremacy. Rayquaza proceeds to come down from the ozone lair to stop the fighting, where the two Pokemon then go into special caverns to rest. Major land masses are created, while Regigigas moves the continents, forming all of the regions. It also creates the five titans, Regirock, Regice, Registeel, Regilecki, and Regidrago. Heatran is formed in a pool of lava in the Hisui region. And finally, Arceus creates the adamant, Lustrous, and Grisius orbs before falling into a deep slumber. Circa 300 million to 20,000 years ago, prehistory. Pokemon such as Ammonite and Kabuto come into existence and are widespread. Millions of years later, scientists are able to bring them back to life by using devices to revive their fossils. Also during this time, an ancient version of Genesect exists, whose DNA would later be used by Team Plasma to create a much stronger version of it with cybernetic technology. Humans also come into existence. One notable event that happened 20,000 years ago is of a meteorite containing Eternatus falling into the Galar region. Finally, sometime during the Iron Age, Regigigas is sealed away in the Snowpoint Temple. Regirock, Regice, and Registeel are sealed away in various parts of the Hoenn region, and Regilecki and Regidrago are sealed away in Galar's Split Decision Ruins. Circa 987 BC, the ultimate weapon. A long drawn out war breaks out between two countries. Many lives are lost and Pokemon are used merely as tools in the conflict. As the King of the Kalos region has his own Pokemon, Floette, taken away and used as exactly that. After receiving Floette's body, as builds the ultimate weapon to bring it back to life. He succeeds, but having lost all hope, he uses the machine for destruction and eliminates both sides of the conflict. As gains immortality due to being exposed to some of the machine's energy, and Floette leaves him when it realizes how many people lost their lives, just so its own could be restored. To prevent it from being used again, 
as his brother later buries it deep underground. This is the first event that takes place exclusively in the Mega Timeline because Mega Stones are created from stones that become exposed to the machine's energy. Circa 981 BC, the darkest day, Eternatus, attempting to stay alive, absorbs all of Galar's energy, which in turn causes a red light to appear. All of this results in a black storm which causes Pokemon to go berserk while Dynamaxing and Gigantamaxing, and the region almost gets destroyed. Zacian and Zamazenta then defeat Eternatus, ending the darkest day and bringing peace to Galar. Circa 4 BC, Meteor Showers and Primal Reversion. Meteor Showers plague the Hoenn region, destroying the home of the Draconid people, a tribe of dragon-type trainers, and creating the present-day Meteor Falls. Meanwhile, the world overflows with natural energy, which Groudon and Kyogre, in their primal forms, fight over. They cause massive destruction and are calmed by Rayquaza, who is summoned by the Draconid people, using a wish on a meteor. Rayquaza is then seen by the people of Hoenn as a savior. This is another Mega Timeline exclusive event, because as we will explore soon, Mega Evolution does not play a part. Additionally, it's unknown in this timeline whether Kyogre and Groudon had met before prior to this, circa 496 to the 800s AD, writing in the Celestica people. During this period, the earliest known writing system is created and discovered thousands of years later in places such as the Ruins of Elf, Tenobi Ruins, and Salacion Ruins. Scientists are not sure whether the identical unknown preceded or seceded this writing system, but have come to the conclusion that the two are connected. The Celestica people also thrive in the Hisui region during this period, though they could have been around as early as 200 BC. They worship Arceus and build structures dedicated to it, which can still be found in modern times. Circa 996 AD, Kyogre and Groudon reawaken. 1,000 years after the meteor showers, Mega Timeline Hoenn is once again struck by a meteor. However, this one is so massive that it creates what is now Sutopolis City. The primal energy flowing from the meteor reawakens Kyogre and Groudon who fight over it once again. The people of Hoenn wish for Rayquaza to save them, and it quells the two by performing the world's first mega evolution. The Sky Pillar is built in Rayquaza's honor, and the Draconid people start to pass down the prophecy that the meteor will return in another 1,000 years. Circa 1213 to 1515, more legendaries commence. In 1213, Xerneas and Eveltal release and absorb life energy, respectively throughout the Kalos region before they go to rest. The Bell and Brass Towers are built in Johto's Ekrutik City in 1299, and Lugia and Ho-Oh perch at their tops. 1499 sees a spirit tomb being bound to a fissure in an odd keystone for its misdeeds. Then in 1515, a couple things happen in Alola. First, the Tapus are defeated by Solgaleo and Lunala in a battle, and are given the Tapunium Z as a reward for winning. In return, the Tapus are given many Cosmog for them to look over until they evolve. Secondly, Magirna is created by a scientist and is presented to a king's daughter. Meanwhile, at an unspecified date during all this time, the Sinjo ruins are built by people from Hisui and Johto, where the people from the two regions meet and share their ideas and mythology. Circa 1800s, the settlement of Hisui and the events of Legends Arceus. A group of people called the Galaxy Team settle in the Hisui region and form Jubilife Village. The team consists of people from various different regions, and one arm of the team, headed by Professor Laventon, sets out to create the Hisui's first Pokedex. Meanwhile, the Diamond and Pearl clans worship a god they call the Almighty Sinnoh, but disagree with each other on whether it created time or space. The first Pokeballs are also invented at this time. Two years later, a space-time rift appears above Mount Coronet, and Rei slash Akari, a child from the future, emerges from it. Along with helping in the creation of Hisui's first Pokedex, our protagonist also calms the five noble Pokemon, who have been struck by lightning from the space-time rift, causing them to go on frenzies and attack people. When the rift gets bigger, they capture both Dialga and Palkia, atop Mount Coronet's Temple of Sinnoh, calming time and space and closing the rift. However, the temple is destroyed and becomes what is now Spear Pillar. Having been 
called on by Arceus to seek all of Hisui's Pokemon. Our protagonist does so, and with the help of Volo, searches for all of Arceus's plates. However, with one plate remaining, Volo reveals his true colors, having been responsible for the rift, as to fight Arceus with Giratina by his side and use its power to reshape the world. Volo battles our protagonist in one last attempt to get Arceus, eventually using Giratina as well. When this fails, and all the plates are gathered, the Celestica Flute becomes the Azure Flute, which is used to face Arceus. Our protagonist becomes victorious, and they receive the Legend Plate from Arceus, a part of itself which allows it to walk alongside them. Circa 1849, Lugia and Ho-Oh fly off. A Critique City Brass Tower burns to the ground, killing three Pokemon inside. Ho-Oh resurrects the three as Raikou, Entei, and Suiku, and flies off in search of a pure-hearted trainer. Lugia also flies off and settles in the Whirl Islands. 1925-1995 New Discoveries and New Life the 70 years leading up to more contemporary events begins with the invention of the modern Pokeball in 1925, using research from Professor Westwood of Celadon University. In Galar, Mustard defeats Opal and becomes the region's champion in 1969, a title he keeps until 1987, when he is dethroned and retires not long after. Also of note, some of the game's protagonists are born around this time, such as Brendan in May in 1984, and Red and Blue a year later in 1985. Ten years later in 1995, Porygon, the very first Pokémon created via scientific engineering, is created. At an unspecified date during the latter half of this period, a group of scientists from Kanto discover Mew inside a deep jungle in the South American country of Guyana. They later take part of its DNA and clone it inside Cinnabar Island's Pokemon Mansion. The clone, which they name Mewtwo, eventually escapes and destroys the mansion, and goes to reside in Cerulean Cave. 1996, the events of Generations 1 and 3. In Kanto, Red and his rival, Blue, leave on their Pokemon journeys. After getting the eight gym badges and defeating Team Rocket, Red challenges the Elite Four and the champion, who is none other than Blue himself. He becomes champion after defeating Blue, and goes to the Sevi Islands to destroy what is left of Team Rocket. Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee not only have Megastones present, but also have different protagonists. So this Kanto takes place in the Mega Timeline, and things play out a bit differently. Here, Chase slash Elaine takes Red's place, and Trace takes Blue's. Blue is present but is significantly older, and aids in defeating Team Rocket. Also, unlike in the non-Mega Timeline, our protagonist meets Green upon catching Mewtwo, a trainer who wanted to catch it for herself. And there is no Civi Islands this time around. Concurrently in Hoenn, Brendan slash May begins their journey shortly after moving to the region from Johto. They defeat all eight of Hoenn's gym leaders and calm Groudon and Kyogre after they're awakened from their slumber by Team Magma and Team Aqua. Afterwards, our protagonist challenges and defeats Hoenn's Elite Four and Champion, becoming champion themselves. In the Mega Timeline, the main series of events plays out mostly the same, except Groudon and Kyogre go through Primal Reversion when they're awakened. Also in this timeline, a new series of events known as the Delta Episode begins after Brendan slash May becomes champion. Here, a meteoroid is in danger of hitting Hoenn, like the giant meteor a thousand years prior. Xenia, one of the last of the Draconid people, steals the keystone belonging to Brendan slash May's rival, hoping to use it to mega evolve Rayquaza to destroy the meteoroid. This is done with good intentions, however, as Team Magma slash Aqua wants to get rid of the meteoroid in a much more sinister way. Send it to non-Mega Hoenn. This is bad news for that timeline, as no Mega Evolution means no means to stop an oncoming meteor. Xenia destroys the device the evil team needs, and she, along with our protagonist, go to the top of Spear Pillar. Rayquaza is then summoned, Mega Evolved, and destroys the meteoroid and also battles Deoxys, which is inside. 1997 to 1998, the first in-between period. In Kanto, Cinnabar Island's volcano erupts, destroying almost the entire island. As a result, Cinnabar's gym leader, Blaine, relocates his gym to Seafoam Islands. Speaking of gym leaders, Giovanni is no longer Viridian City's gym leader due to Team Rocket's defeat, so that vacancy is filled by Blue. 
Meanwhile, Red leaves his championship position to go train on Mount Silver, making Lance Kanto's champion by default. In the Elite Four, Agatha retires, and Lorelai goes back to her home on Four Island. These new vacancies are filled by Will, Karen, and Koga, the latter of whom gives his daughter, Janine, the new title of Fuchsia City Gym Leader. Finally, in non-mega timeline Hoenn, Frontier Brain Annabelle enters an ultra wormhole and is taken to the Alola region in the other timeline. 1999, the events of Generations 2 and 4. In Johto, Ethan slash Chris slash Lyra leaves New Bark Town to run an errand for Professor Elm, while a boy named Silver steals one of his starter Pokemon. A revived Team Rocket enrages many Gyarados at the Lake of Rage as they take over the Goldenrod Radio Tower in an attempt to contact Giovanni. Our protagonist defeats them, after which they are never heard from again. After collecting all eight gym badges, our protagonist travels to Kanto, where they challenge the Elite Four and Champion, and defeat all of Kanto's gym leaders afterwards. Once all that is done, they travel to Mount Silver, where they challenge and defeat Red. At the same time in Sinnoh, previously known as Asui, Lucas slash Dawn and their rival Barry leave Twinleaf Town and begin their Pokemon journeys. They challenge the eight gym leaders and take on Team Galactic along the way. Their leader, Cyrus, wants to remake the entire universe in his image using the powers of Dialga and Palkia. After calming the legendary Pokemon, our protagonist challenges Sinnoh's Elite Four and champion Cynthia, after which they become champion themselves. 2000 to 2010, the second in-between period. Caitlyn leaves the Sinnoh Johto battle frontier to become an Elite Four member in Unova, where a Team Plasma scientist creates Genesect from an ancient insect with cybernetic technology in an attempt to create the strongest Pokemon. Team Plasma also steals a Purloin belonging to Hugh's sister. It's also possibly around this time that Leon becomes champion of Galar, judging by his age. 2011, the events of Black and White. In Unova, Hilbert slash Hilda and their friends, Sharon and Bianca, receive their first Pokemon in New Vema Town and go off on their Pokemon journey. Upon arriving in Accumula Town, our protagonist encounters Team Plasma, who announces their plans to separate Pokemon from humans. They also battle their leader, a man simply known as N, who claims Pokemon are his friends. After earning all eight gym badges and defeating the Elite Four, they discover that N has defeated Champion Alder and summons his castle, destroying the Pokemon League castle. Getsis, one of the members of the Seven Sages, reveals that he had the plan to separate people from their Pokemon so that he could be the only one in the entire world with Pokemon by his side. After N and Getsis are defeated, N apologizes for his misdeeds and flies off with Zekrom slash Reshiram. Afterwards, our protagonist gets recruited by the undercover officer Looker to seek out and arrest the remaining of the Seven Sages. Once all six are arrested, our protagonist challenges the Elite Four once again to have a battle with Alder and becomes champion of Unova upon his defeat. 2012, the third in-between period. Many people take on new roles in Unova, with Bianca becoming Professor Juniper's assistant, Iris taking Alder's place as champion, and Sharon, Roxy, and Marlin becoming gym leaders upon new vacancies. Hilbert slash Hilda also flies off with their dragon to a faraway region to search for N. Meanwhile, Team Plasma splits off into two. One is loyal to N and dedicates themselves to protect Pokemon that are separated from their trainers, while the other is formed by Getsis and Zinzolin, solely dedicated to conquering Unova. 2013, the events of Black and White 2 and Generation 6. Returning to Unova, Nate slash Rosa receives their first Pokemon in Aspersia City. They go off on their journey with Hugh, who hopes to get his sister's Purloin back from Team Plasma. After our protagonist earns their seventh badge from the Opelucid City Gym, Team Plasma attacks and covers the city in unbreakable ice. The Shadow Triad uses the opportunity to steal the DNA splicers from the gym. Getsis is eventually confronted by our protagonist, who is almost frozen alive by an attack from Kyrian, but is saved in the nick of time by N and his legendary dragon. However, Getsis uses Kyrium's power to transform N's dragon back into an orb, and uses the DNA splicers to turn the former into black slash white Kyrium. 
Curium is defeated in a battle, causing the dragons to separate, and Getsus is also defeated. By N's suggestion, our protagonist then goes to the Pokemon League, defeating the Elite Four and Champion. Afterwards, they go to the remnants of N's castle, where after a battle with him, N says goodbye to his dragon so it can go join them. Concurrently, in Mega Timeline Kalos, Kalem slash Serena leaves their home to receive their first Pokemon with their friends. While on their journey to collect the eight gym badges, they encounter Team Flare several times, an organization who wishes to create a beautiful and better world while making money. After earning their seventh badge, our protagonist is contacted by Lysander, who reveals himself to be the leader of Team Flare and his intention to fire off the ultimate weapon to eliminate all life in the world. After battling Lysander twice, they make their way to the basement of Team Flare's headquarters, where they find Xerneas slash Yveltal and battle Lysander once again. Our protagonist and their friends try to reason with him, but he fires the ultimate weapon anyway. Thankfully, it has very little power left, which causes it to destroy itself and buries both the headquarters and Lysander, causing Team Flare to disband. Our protagonist then goes to the Pokemon League, where they defeat the Elite Four and Champion, causing them to become champion of Kalos. 2014 to 2015, the fourth in-between period. Gladion and Lily flee Aether Paradise with a type, Null and Cosmog, nicknamed Nebi, respectively. 2016, the events of Generation 7. In Mega Timeline Alola, Elio slash Selene leaves their home on Route 1 to go on their Pokemon journey and receives their starter from Hala. They also receive their Z-Ring at the festival that inaugurates their Island Challenge, which consists of seven trials and four Grand Trials in order to become the Island Champion. Along the way, they encounter Team Skull, a group of misfits who failed their Island Challenge and aim to cause trouble, as well as the Aether Foundation who aims to heal hurt Pokemon. After defeating Team Skull's leader, Guzma, at the Shady House, our protagonist travels to Aether Paradise, where they battle Luzamine, the president of the Aether Foundation. Luzamine opens ultra wormholes all throughout the region and enters one with Guzma, after which our protagonist enters ultra space to battle Luzamine and bring the two back to Alola. Our protagonist later enters Alola's newly opened Pokemon League, where they beat the Elite Four and Professor Kukui, becoming the region's first champion. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon take place in a different reality where most of the aforementioned events play out the same way, but Luzumi now seeks to aid the Ultra Recon Squad in stopping Necrozma. When our protagonist and Lily reach the altar of the Sun slash Moon, they discover that Luzamine and Guzma have been defeated and Necrozma fuses with Nebi. It's followed into Ultra Space and reaches Ultra Megalopus, where it is transformed into Ultra Necrozma. After a long battle, Necrozma is defeated and Nebi is freed from its influence. Sometime after our protagonist becomes champion, the Aether Foundation is attacked by Team Rainbow Rocket, which consists of the leaders of evil teams from realities where they succeeded in their goals, seeking to use the Aether Foundation's research to further their goals of multiversal conquest, they are eventually defeated. 2019, the events of Generation 8. With nothing of note happening in between 2017 and 2018, we conclude our timeline in Galar. Victor slash Gloria and their rival Hop receive their starter and meet a mysterious Pokemon in the slumbering Weld. They journey across the region to collect all eight gym badges in order to enter the Champion Cup. Along the way, they come across Team Yell, a gang of misfits who support Marnie in the Gym Challenge, and Macro Cosmos, a conglomerate whose chairman, Rose, has endorsed Bead. Our protagonist also travels to the Isle of Armor, where they train under former champion Mustard, and the Crown Tundra, where they investigate three mysteries surrounding legendary Pokemon with retired gym leader Peony. During the Champion Cup, Rose interrupts the championship match by reawakening Eternatus and bringing about a second darkest day to provide Galar with energy to last a millennium. Our protagonist and Hop summon Zacian and Zamazenta and defeat and catch Eternatus, after which our protagonist defeats Leon to become the new champion of Galar. Not long after, brothers Swordward and Shieldbert cause chaos around the region in a misguided attempt to restore the Galarian monarchy, but are stopped by our protagonist and Hop, with the former catching Zacian slash Zamazenta in the process. Whew. 
And that does it for the Pokemon timeline. It's only a matter of time before we see where Scarlet and Violet fit in. Pun very much intended. But let us know in the comments section what you thought of our timeline. And huge shout out to our writer Wesley, who did a fantastic job on the research for this script. Make sure to hit that notification bell and binge more of our Pokemon videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.